our live program. But most of all, log on to GiveDay.org anytime before midnight tonight and make a contribution to your favorite nonprofit organization. You can choose from over 400 organizations, and you'll be supporting those groups who keep the Tampa Bay area healthy and strong. On behalf of all of us here, thank you so much for watching, and the magic continues. Welcome to Give Day Tampa Bay 2018, live from the WEDU studios at the Berkman Family Broadcast Center. Hey, good afternoon, and welcome to another hour of Give Day Tampa Bay. My name is Rob Lorai, and I'll be your host for the next hour of our live broadcast. We're here at the WEDU studios in Tampa with representatives from some of the more than 400 nonprofits who are participating in Give Day Tampa Bay today. The theme of Give Day is Live Here, Give Here, and making a donation is quick and easy. Just log on to GiveDay.org and search for your favorite charity from our list of participants. And when you hit the Donate button, you will fill in your credit card information and make your secure gift. The minimum donation is only $5. Give Day will be going on until midnight tonight. We'll be live streaming until 7 o'clock. In the next hour, I'll be talking and listening to various nonprofit groups who are making a difference here in the Tampa Bay area. Well, while our next guests are being seated, let's go to the leaderboard and get an update total on the donations that have come in so far today. Well, our first uh, nonprofit this hour uh, represents Cedar Kirk, and our guests are John Ryder and Matt Schick. And uh, Matt and John, thank you for coming by. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Cedar Kirk, I've been there. Tell, tell the uh, folks who are viewing what Cedar Kirk is. Well, Cedar Kirk is a year-round camp and conference center. We're located on about 170 acres uh, along the Alifaya River out in Lithia. And we are a, a conference center where folks can come out and get away from the busyness of their everyday lives and the noisiness and come out and come on retreat. So we're a retreat center for lots of nonprofit school groups. We're affiliated with the Presbyterian Church. We serve a wide variety of folks. Uh, we have about a dozen programs that we offer throughout the year for children, youth, adults, and families. But we're really known for our summer camp program as well. And how, how can people find out about the summer camp? Is there a website? There is, cedarkirk.org. Uh, we have all of our summer camp information up there and descriptions of the individual programs and you all know, the fun. You have one of the most beautiful spots in the entire Hillsborough County area. We're gonna, we've got some video of people enjoying Cedar Kirk. Uh, let's, uh, let's go to that video right now. Well, I come back to Cedar Kirk because it really is a place apart, like it says. I would really love to come together with friends and make new ones and have a really, really great time. I just keep coming back because I just love getting away from all the technology and getting to meet so many amazing people. The community is very special here because everyone's just so opening and welcome. An uh, amazing balance of uh, spiritual activities and fun, and I really like that balance. It just feels like home and there's so many friends and 
it's not like a camp where your counselors are just there to keep you safe. You can really talk to your counselors and have fun with them. I feel very connected, very happy here. It's almost like a second or third home to me, and I really like that about this place. My favorite part of Cedar Creek is that away from all the electronics and devices, and that you can just like connect with God and meet new people and also have fun with your friends. All right, well, I can, I can attest. It is one of the most idyllic places. Those kids look like they're having a lot of fun. Do you, do you uh, try to make sure the kids who can't afford it are able to come to Cedar Kirk for the summer? We do, and that's what we're taking donations for today. We offer a scholarship program. It's always kind of been our ethos to make sure that if a kid wants to come to camp, that, that we'll find a way to, to make that happen regardless of their need. Camp is such an important experience for kids, I think. It's all about, you know, getting along, building community, learning new skills. Uh, we saw the, the kids uh, in the canoes there. What are some of the other things that go on at the camp? I think really the, the, the kind of the keystone is the small group experience. It's building a family throughout the week and learning to trust people, get along with them. To, it's a safe place to challenge yourself and, and try new things and grow emotionally and, and spiritually and physically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so are, 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 there, are there animals out there in the Cedar Kirk uh, area? Do you see many uh, there wild There is a animals? little more uh, wildlife, especially as development has kind of encroached on where we're at. We see a lot more, um, so foxes, owls, um, uh, occasionally a bobcat, uh, nothing really too dangerous, a uh, little snake every once in a while, but um, of course there's alligators along the river, but uh, yeah. you know, we give them a wide berth and uh, enjoy uh, being in that same space as them. I think that's a real neat thing for kids to experience too, is that maybe they don't get to encounter uh, those kind of aspects of nature. Uh, it's as better much. than staying home and watching TV and the Absolutely. counselors keep them safe. So uh, uh, the money will be used especially to help kids who may be a, a disadvantaged to uh, to come to camp, something that a lot of kids, uh, if you're middle class or upper middle class, a lot of kids do that, but if you're low income, it doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and, and there's lots of really great day camps throughout the Bay Area that offer incredible programs, but I think we're one of the few that have an overnight experience. So it's, these are week-long overnight experiences for kids, and I think there's something really beneficial about coming away for that extended period of time, and this scholarship program really is set up to help kids uh, of any means uh, have that experience. Well, Matt and John, thank you so much for coming by and telling us about Cedar Kirk. Thank you for having us. And it's again, the website? www.cedarkirk.org. Thank you so much. Thank you. All thank right. you, Rob. Well, while our next guests are being seated, let's go to our leaderboard and get another updated total on the total donations that have come in so far today. Okay, well, next we're going to talk with Christopher from Creative Pinellas. And uh, Christopher Hubbard, welcome to WEDU and Give Day Tampa Bay. Thank you very much, Rob. So what's the mission of Creative Pinellas? Well, Creative Pinellas' mission is to support Pinellas County as a vibrant, integrated, collaborative, and sustainable arts and culture destination. Now, the, it, it is important that we support the arts, right? Because, Absolutely. Yeah. Why? Um, just it, it permeates every facet of our lives. And not only should we support the arts, but the individual artists that create that art as well. Uh, being a professional artist uh, in the area can be difficult. And we want to make sure that artists understand that life in Tampa Bay, you don't have to go elsewhere to find great arts opportunities. All right, so Creative Pinellas, do you give donation or give grants rather to artists? We do. We have a professional and emerging artist grant. We actually announced our newest emerging artists just recently. So our grants will be going out with them soon. And both the professional and emerging artist grant recipients blog on our website. So you'll see uh, over 22 artists actively blogging uh, on creativepinellas.org. And what's the range of the kind of art that's done by uh, the artists that are supported by Creative Pinellas? We've got a very wide range of disciplines from uh, traditional visual art, painting, drawing, sculpture, and photography uh, to choreography. We have music composition, uh, literature, fiction, nonfiction, poetry. Uh, we run the gamut of all the support that we give to the arts. And if you were to compare arts to sports in terms of 
uh, impact on people and also economic impact. You just compare. I mean, sports are certainly important, and sports, we give a yeah. lot of aid to sports. Absolutely, uh, sports are, are certainly an enjoyable and are a great pastime. But the arts really add vibrancy to our lives. And uh, if you look at the Arts and Economic Prosperity Index that's produced by the Americans for the Arts, you can see an enormous impact of creating jobs, bringing arts. Um, and bringing tax funds to our area and really supporting the organizations that not only support the arts, but also support sports and tourism and all the other things we enjoy here in Tampa Bay. I imagine some companies look at the local arts scene as one of the factors in deciding whether or not to move here. Absolutely. A lot of companies do. They want to see how vibrant the community is. And if they're going to attract innovative and, and creative people, they want to make sure that they have a place to stay and enjoy when they're here. How did Creative Pinellas get its start? Well, Creative Pinellas was started by the Board of County Commissioners in Pinellas County and uh, was originally the Pinellas County Arts Council and was uh, recently rebranded as Creative Pinellas and we live in the uh, Pinewood Cultural Park that's down in Largo and, and the old uh, Gulf Coast Museum of Art building. Mm -hmm. So we're glad to support that through our arts business incubator. And we have a gallery space that we're able to partner with a lot of organizations to host exhibitions in that space again. And with all the museums in Pinellas County, especially downtown St. Pete, it, uh, it is really happening there. It really is. Yeah. We're seeing a, a really revitalization of our area. And we support museums and organizations from St. Petersburg all the way up to Tarpon Springs and everything in between. Do you still get money from the county commission or are you largely reliant on donations from the public? We do get funded from the Board of County Commissioners and the Tourism Development Council. We're very thankful for those funds. Uh, but donations and support will allow us to expand our programming and reach more artists and our residents in Pinellas County to put them in touch with the arts in their area. Do you have a lot of submissions every year? Do people write a lot of grant proposals to we you? We do. We see a, a lot of really talented artists and uh, many times we have uh, a, a really a hard choice on which grants to give out and uh, we really encourage those artists to keep applying because sometimes they're just so close to getting that grant. So don't get discouraged. No, no, keep it up. And, you know, it's all part of the process. And we have a panel that really provides feedback and support to every artist that applies. All right. Well, Christopher Hubbard, thanks a lot. Creative Pinellas is the nonprofit. Thank you for yes, coming sir. by Give Day Tampa Bay. Thank you very much for having us. Cool. All right. Well, our next guests are being seated. Let's go to our leaderboard and get an updated total on the donations that have come in so far. And we're back with Give Day Tampa Bay. I'm Rob Lorai, and you're watching WEDU-TV. Our next guests are with a nonprofit called One Kin Roof Incorporated, and our guests are Nikki Miller, Chelsea Miller, Mickey Johnson, and Krizia Dedalva, uh, De if I got those names right. Mm, it, pretty close. All right. Uh, Nikki Miller, uh, what is uh, your group? What does your group do? So our organization, One Can Roof, is really focusing on two of our founding principles, which are diversity and inclusion. We really want to develop and build a community that is inclusive of people who happen to have disabilities, people without disabilities, people who are older, maybe retired, younger uh, university students. And we're really focusing on the connection um, between all of these individuals. And how did the organization come about? What's the history of it? 
Um, thank you so much for asking. So actually two of our um, biggest inspirations are my sister Chelsea Miller right here and then Mikey Johnson. Um, his, his mother Debbie Johnson and my sister Angie Miller, we've um, come together to, we want to help create a, a future where they feel purpose, where they feel supported, where they can live. Um, so it's, it's housing, um, additional housing options, but social networking um, opportunities for individuals as well. And how, how important is it to have your sister be part of larger society and, uh, you know, just have day-to-day -day interactions with uh, other folks? Oh, it is so hugely important. Actually, Chelsea, uh, Chelsea's nonverbal, but she's very smart, and she um, independently typed something that she would like to share with us. Um, Chrysia is one of our USF students who has come on board our team, and she's going to share what Chelsea wrote. Oh, would you share that with us? Okay. Yes, of course. So Chelsea here is a very funny, witty, strong young lady who happens to be nonverbal with autism. And she wanted to reach out to you viewers on why to donate to our organization, One Kin Roof. And she typed independently this message. Chelsea, come here and let's, let's go ahead and talk. She's very excited. Yeah, she's very excited to share with you guys what First she wrote. She, yeah. Yes, it is. So she wrote... I want people to donate to real ideas for progress. People will work to have a vision become a reality. Think we will work to expand reality, to experience a whole wonderful world of working, living, and playing, to love and thrive in. Yes, we do have what it takes to make it happen. Please donate to what will be the future for people like me. Thinking differently is what has to happen. Love alone is not enough. We have to love a vision with what will work for all. Only want to what each person needs. People will all thrive in one kin roof. Your donation will change the world. So she wrote this for you guys, and I think that she inspires me every day. And through my involvement at U the UCF and USF community, I realize with how we connected, how it, and crucial it is for others, university students in our community, to also find that connection with other ad elderly um, adults and other adults with disabilities in our Tampa Bay area. And hopefully, um, that's what our program is all about: is making those connections in the community and. Um, matching them with similar interests and ideas and proximity to location and fi making that bridge to well bridge to well-being for the one kin roof in our Tampa area. Thank you very much, Chrissy. And, and Chelsea, that is a powerful, powerful message. Thank you for writing it. Thank you. That is really terrific. Mikey, thank you for coming by. Have you been on TV before? Um, a few times. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming by. And where did the, the uh, name one kin roof come from? Um, we actually just kind of brainstormed it. Um, kin means family, and we're really wanting to create, you know, this this kind of um, connection. So the roof analogy. It's a beautiful um, thing. It really is beautiful. Thank you. And the only other thing we wanted to mention, um, Mikey here actually wrote our mission statement um, for our nonprofit. Mikey, can you share with us? Um. We're building a non-exclusive, totally inclusive community environment where people are accepted, understood, and able to participate in social activities and corporate activities. They want to live happy and love and laugh and play. Vicki, well, that is beautiful too. And we just, we really want, we envision a community that embraces all facets of diversity. Um, we were doing some research and we see, we've seen that nearly everybody is touched by, the, by, you know, emotionally impacted. Either you were a caregiver, you are a caregiver, maybe one day you will be a caregiver or you might need a caregiver or just that friendship and support. Um, so we really want to make a huge um, uh, difference and start right here in the Tampa Bay area. All right, well, Nikki, thank you so much. What a great job you all do. Thank you for coming thank by so WEDU. Much. It's great to have you here. You. Well, while our next guests are being seated, let's go to our leaderboard and get an updated total on your donations so far today.
Welcome back. Let's talk to some folks who are experts on Give Day Tampa Bay, how it works and how we're doing so far. And we're here with Wilma Norton of Give Day Tampa Bay and the Tampa Bay Community Foundation. Hi, Wilma. How are you? Hey, Rob. How are you? Are you? We've spoken today, but it's the first time we're seeing each other. I interviewed you on the radio this morning, but tell me, how is the day going so far? We've been so pleased with the energy and how everything is going today. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about, uh, we couldn't do this without our partners and supporters. And the Brink Foundation has been our premier sponsor this year. And uh, they got so caught up in the excitement today that they've offer they offered two surprise prizes earlier this afternoon. And just now... They pulled me aside and said, let's do one more. So we're urging the nonprofits to go to the Give Day Tampa Bay Facebook page, see what the, prize, what the contest is. And between now and 8 o'clock, uh, it involves getting likes on their social media posts. And uh, there's going to be a $2,000 prize for the person who gets the most likes for on their the social media. the that gets the most. Yes. Okay, so again, they got to go to Facebook. They have to go yeah. to Facebook, yeah. and all of the directions are on the Give Day Tampa Bay Facebook page on what their post needs to include. And the person who gets the most likes between now and 8 o'clock is going to get a $2,000 prize. Earlier this afternoon, Beat NB won a $2,000 surprise prize, and the Community Food Pantry got a $1,000 oh, surprise that's great. prize. That's great. So, so, Wilma, how many years has Give Day Tampa Bay been going on? This is our fifth year. Okay. And so uh, how are we doing so far today? We are ahead of where we've been in other years at this time, but we hope that doesn't cause people to stop giving. Uh, we want to take it home strong the rest of the day. And there's some power hour prizes coming up going all the way up till midnight. And uh, that... It, we're encouraging nonprofits to get lots of donors in those hours okay. to try to win more prizes. So folks who are watching at home, uh, or watching online, tell your friends if you haven't yet donated, because we've got, we've got until midnight tonight we've got until midnight. to complete. All right. we've, got, we've got more than five hours to continue <laughs> to give. Giveday.org. All right. We're going to see you before the end of the show, I'll too. I'll see you again in a few minutes. Wilma Norton, thanks a lot. Well, there are lots of ways that individuals can decide that they need to start a nonprofit organization. Let's hear another story about someone deciding that they needed to give back and help out. Quantum Leap Farm began in 2000, founded by Dr. Edie Dopking, and she had a dream to use horses as therapy partners to serve military veterans and individuals with special needs. And it's really grown, that dream has grown into something bigger than we could have ever imagined. And now we're a full service equine assisted therapy center offering physical, occupational, speech therapy and mental health therapy for a wide range of individuals with special needs. When someone interacts with a horse, it's not necessarily what they add to the interaction, but it's what the horse reveals in that person that makes the impact. And so we find that whatever is inside that person that was hidden is brought out and so for somebody who has a physical disability that could be walking for the first time uh, for a child with autism that could be speaking their first words or learning how to introduce themselves to a new friend at school and especially for our military veterans it could be them sharing their story for the first time to another being that's non-judgmental that lends a listening ear. Um, so we really want to help individuals reach their greatest human potential and improve quality of life and we use horses to do that. Success Stories is um, from a, in, a military veteran, we'll call him David. He was a U.S. Marine and he was deployed shortly after 9-11 and while he was deployed he was supposed to go on a mission, and it was a, a mission to respond to developing conflict. And when he was going to get on the helicopter, he was replaced at the last minute by his best friend. And that day, the helicopter was shot down, and his best friend, along with six of his fellow soldiers, died. And so David lived with a lot of survivor's guilt from that and didn't really have time to heal from that experience and so when he came home he was a different person. He somehow made his way to Quantum Leap Farm and the first day he was skeptical and he was quiet but through the five days that he was at Quantum Leap Farm in our military retreat he really grew and he began to open up and he began to share 
and he really found uh, a place that he calls home now. When you give to Quantum Leap Farm, you're impacting the life of a veteran and you could be saving their lives. And so we think that's a good reason to give. All right, what a terrific program. Well, we're now joined by Eve Hemby, who is with a group called Embracing Legacy. The group was here last year, and they stole the show, I got to say. Uh, Eve, can you welcome back you. to WEDU? Well, I think this is your first time, this actually. This is my first time. But thank you. What is Embracing Legacy? So Embracing Legacy is a nonprofit organization in Tampa, and we are an arts and academic um, organization that has five major programs, Voices of Legacy, our community choir, which is here today, um, our Mighty Marching Lions Band, who's been with us here before. Very exciting. Um, and our Artists of Vision, which is our arts program. They paint murals all over the city. They do um, sketching, drawing, all kinds of arts and crafts. Um, and then JSAL, our Junior Scholars and Leaders program that focused on academic support, as well as um, SAT, ACT prep. Mm -hmm. And our last, our last program is our robotics program, which actually just finished participating in the Brandon Invitational Terrific. and um, focused on STEM. Tell us a little bit about how the group came about. So Embracing Legacy is is a um, outreach of, of Revealing Truth Ministries, which is a, a church located in Tampa. And um, it was founded from the heart of uh, the founder and the pastor there, um, Greg Poe, who um, is no longer with us, but had a vision to see young people um, lives change. And it started because um, at the time in St. Pete, there were um, crime happening where um, young people um, was being shot. And so he said, if he could put an instrument in the hands of a young person, you can save two lives, the mm -hmm. lives of the police officer that was killed, as well as the young person who would then be going to jail as a result of it. So we're here to transform um, a generation by preparing them for the future. And, um, and empowering them to leave a legacy that can't be erased. Well, these five programs are pretty uh, exciting. So yes. today you brought with us a choir. Tell us about what we're about to yes. hear. Yes, so I'm really excited about the Voices of Legacy because um, they range from ages three to 18, and um, some of them have been with us for years, but um, our uh, director, Ms. Sheever Jones, um, she leads them in vocal development. They perform all over the city. They were in the Gasparilla pay, uh, Parade, um, as well as many other performances. You can catch them at the Wiregrass um, Mall in, mm -hmm. um, in the, during the holidays. And so um, I think you guys will be very pleasantly uh, surprised by the inspirational um, song that they sing today, as well as the energy that they carry. Okay. Well. Choir, take it away. You cannot be denied. 
That's terrific. That's terrific. The kids Thank must take you. a lot of time. It's got a, a lot of time out of their day to practice to do this. Right? They do. They do. So we practice, um, and our programs are offered totally free to the community every uh -huh. Saturday uh -huh. um, at our location on North Armenia. Where can people find you on the web? So we have a website. It's www.embraceandlegacyinc.org. Uh -huh. um, if you just even type in, go to Google and type in Embrace and Legacy, it'll take you directly um, to our site. We have a Facebook page. So if you type in Embrace and Legacy, it'll come up there, as well as the Instagram. Eve Hemby, thank you so much. Embracing thank Legacy is a, is a nonprofit. Thank you for coming by WEDU. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Well, while our next guests are being seated, let's go to our leaderboard and get an updated total on the donations that have come in so far. Well, we're back with Jessica Carter from Big Brothers and Big Sisters and uh, her friend Angie. So, uh, Jessica Carter, welcome to WEDU. Tell us about uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Big Brothers and Big Sisters is the largest and oldest youth mentoring program in the country. Um, I'm the big sister. She's my little sister. So we've been together for three years. Uh, it's a great youth mentoring program. As a big sister, I get a lot out of it with her. Um, and I think we kind of balance each other really well. It's a really good mentoring and match system that they have. There's several different programs. We are in the community-based one where we can go out into the community, do things together. There's a site-based one where people are matched in the school system. There's Bigs in Blue where we have law enforcement matched with different big brothers and little brothers and they have a good system there too. So there's a lot of different programs and our website actually goes through a lot of them. That's mm -hmm. bbstampabay.org. Uh -huh. And you can find out about the different programs, how to become a mentor, how to enroll your child if you have a little that you think might benefit from the program. So, uh, Angie, tell us a little bit about what you do when, when you get together with Jessica. What kind of activities do you get involved in? Well, we do a lot of, um, well, we, we go to, like, events that Big Brothers Big Sister throws, like um, we go to the ballathon or we go to the roller skating um, the Volathon is one of my favorites because we get to, um, we, we, um, people donate money to the Volathon and it just, it's just fun to do and it helps raise money for Big Brothers Big Sisters. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when, uh, before you met Jessica, uh, did you have any older people in your life? Did you have, uh, uh, uh mentors? I had, or? I had my mom, but she uh, worked a lot and yeah. my two older siblings. But, you know, they were at that stage where they didn't want to hang out with their little sister. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how is it to have an older friend like, uh, like Jessica? Well, well it's really um, nice to have her because then I can talk to her about things that go on in school, things that I'm having trouble with. You know, um, some, it's just somebody to talk to and to um, talk through problems that I have through so school. So you can confide in Jessica yes, and say, ask for it. So uh, Jessica, how, how many kids um, are, are maybe on the waiting list for Big Brothers and Big Sisters There's here in the Tampa a few, Bay area? Um, throughout the agency. We actually cover seven different counties. Um, so in Hillsborough, we actually, or excuse me, it's the Tampa Bay area, which includes Hillsborough, Pinellas, Pasco, Sumter, Hernando. There's 3,000 matches right now. Mm -hmm. um, and each county has a different level of how many they have. Um, so maybe a smaller county has, you know, we have 233 matches in Pasco, which is where we are matched, where Hillsborough's got a little bit longer. Um, they do events throughout the year where they'll have like big for a day where you can come and try out if you want to be a big and you can hang out with the littles that are on the waiting list and see what it really is like. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of events that don't require us to go anywhere. We'll go and bake at my house or we'll go to the grocery store, run errands, just like a normal 
almost really like a big sister and a little sister would do on a regular basis. And you've, and you've been together? You've been her big sister for three years? Three years, yeah. yes. And so, uh, uh, Angie, are you about to graduate from high school, or what's, what's, no, uh, what's ahead in your life? I'm in sixth grade. Oh, you're in sixth grade? Yeah, because I failed two grades because I did not know I had dyslexia. Uh-huh. For uh, first and second, I didn't know I had dyslexia. So you, were never di you were never diagnosed? I wasn't diagnosed until last year, some, uh -huh. in the summer. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't know that at that time. But um, sh tons of my teachers that had me, and my parents thought I had dyslexia, but we just never got di I never got diagnosed with it. But well, I did have like an IEP and now things. Now you're doing better. Now I'm doing much better because yeah. I she did make honor roll last year. Congratulations! So I'm very Way proud to go! Of her. Way to go! <laughs> <laughs> she does really well. We practice a lot, and that's one of the things that we do together. We'll write recipes out, and she practices reading them, and we go through homework assignments and things like that. And you're keeping her on track. I try to. <laughs> So, um, and when people donate money to Big Brothers and Big Sisters, where does that money go? It goes to create matches like us. Uh -huh. It costs $1,500 approximately to support and create the match. That involves the background checks, that involves the process where they screen me, make sure that I'm okay, they ask me my interests, they meet with her family and see what her interests are. It's the best matching program that I could imagine because we really balance each other, things that I'm good at. She's not so good, things that I'm terrible at, she's great at. So we balance each other quite well. Um, but that's where the money goes to programs like that to support all of the events that they put on for free that we can go to. Like she mentioned earlier, the roller skating events, the bolathons raise money for that as well. Well, thank you so much for coming by WEDU today and, and telling us more. Congratulations, you found your match. Thank you. We did. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, very Jessica. Much. Thanks, Angie. Well, while we go to our next guests, uh, they're going to be seated in just a moment. Let's go to our leaderboard and get an updated total on the donations that have come in so far. So we're now joined by members of the Polish American Engineers Association and George Suwala is here. George, welcome to WEDU. Great to have you here. Thank you. What's the purpose of the organization? Uh, we assist uh, high school and university students. Uh, in in building robots? Yeah, among other things. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, for example, we have here uh, two teams from Palm Harbor University High School, uh, which we sponsor. Uh, one of the teams have uh, won Florida championship, the other have placed second. So we have two best teams in Florida. They have also qualified to world championships and have just competed two weeks ago in Houston, Texas. They have placed number 14 and 25 out of over 60,000 students competing on 6,000 teams from around the world. So, so some of the top robotics students in the country right here at Palm Harbor. Right uh, here. Okay, so let me have you, uh, the three of you introduce each other, uh, e or introduce yourselves. Uh, my name's Anna, and as a part of the club, I work on um, documentation, which is met in um, documenting the whole uh, design process of the robot. I'm Paulina, I work on mechanical design, which is building the physical robot itself. Um, and I'm Matt, I work on programming, and I program the robot in Java. Okay, so let's see what some of these robots can do. Uh, you want to explain what we're about to see? Yeah, so um, every year then there's a new set of objectives that, and that we have to do. So uh, one of the objective, objectives this year was to collect these uh, foam blocks, which we call glyphs, and um, stack them around in patterns called ciphers. 
Um, and if, if you put them into patterns, you, you, you get more points. And then uh, uh, something else our robot can also do is collect the, the, uh, the, a figure, which is called a relic. And it can pick it up and then put it over a barrier that is, uh, that is 36 inches away from the barrier itself. That, that's incredible. Now, how did you get your start? Uh, what was the thing? What was your first childhood toy when you when you got childhood toys? Um, for me personally, it was Legos, and then I com I competed in the first um, the Lego League, which is a junior version of the uh, division that we compete in now. I also originally started with Legos, and then moved on to RC cars and other things. And then when I joined the club, I went right into the whole Tetrix building. Yeah, so I started um, by writing my own apps. Um, so in middle school, I sort of self-taught myself um, software development and um, application programming. So that's and, where I started. Robots are one of the fastest growing fields in the country. What, what, what's your highest hope? What, what do each of you want to do eventually uh, with your skills? Um, so I'd love to be a software engineer um, for one of the, the big companies, one of the, the that's um, leading um, the next revolution. Um, I'd love to be a biomedical engineer. Um, I want to be either a, a chemical engineer or a, um, a, a uh, aeronautical engineer. Well, that, incredible aspirations. And George, how does the uh, society, your uh, Polish American Engineer Society, help these kids do what they're uh, doing? We help them primarily financially, but uh, there are also uh, people who have help them on technical aspects. All right. Well, it's really terrific. And, and all three of you told me ahead of time that you want to go to some of the top universities in the country. Yes. Right? That's where you're aiming at. Yeah. I, I heard MIT mentioned. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, congratulations. I mean, this is really quite a project. And, and you know, Thank when you. I was growing up, all we had was Legos to play with. <laughs> and that was your start. All right. Well, our next guests are being seated. We're going to go to our leaderboard right now and get an updated total of all the money that's come in so far today. <laughs> All right, we're out here with uh, a member of the leader of the group, Wheels of Success, and, and, and uh, Susan Jacobs has joined us right now in the WEDU parking lot. I feel sort of like Oprah right now because something really amazing is about to happen. Susan, first of all, tell us about Wheels of Success. So Wheels of Success is going into its 15th year, and this will be our 981st car, and we also have done as many services. Uh, and people who need a car to get to work is why we started the program. So um, you, you find a car for people that are using public transportation or walking to work, if they don't have a car, and you find them a good used car? Well, we actually get the car donated, usually by an individual in the community. We have partners that we work with to refurbish the car. It averages about $3,000 to get a car back on the road. And then the car goes out. 
It isn't an entitlement program. The person does pay a small fee monthly for one year towards the car, so they're invested in their vehicle and they take care of it because part of our program is to learn car maintenance, how to take care of your car so that it doesn't end up in the junkyard. No matter what car that's used, you got to take care of it. And then um, they're able to get the title after that year, and it's their car. They can do whatever they want with it okay, at so, that point. But so, they have to be working full time. So you are about to give away a car to our next guest, Antoinette. Antoinette, your last name is? James. Antoinette James. So tell me, how are you getting to work right now? I catch about two buses to get to work. Um, I have three kids, so it's, and two go to the same school, one goes to a different school. So it's, it's a lot of bus riding to get them all together. Um, it's very frustrating. Um, I work out by the airport, so to get to their school and to get to their daycare is, is a commute. For me, it is on a bus. Um, if, if you add the total amount of commuting on the bus uh, distance, how many miles are we talking about? I mean, are you? Probably. Oh my gosh, you I live don't on know. The, on, the, on the east side of town or the south side? I live side? near Ebor City you, area. Uh -huh. Yeah, so out to the yeah. airport, it's about six or seven miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. probably a day. Yeah. For a two hour ride on multiple buses, whereas by car, it's probably about 20 minutes. Yeah, and, I, right. and, I was, and I was late to work because of the buses, and then I was in jeopardy almost losing my job, so. I was like, I have something has to be done. Yeah. Now, are you paid enough? I mean, can you save enough money given that you've got the kids? Uh, can you save enough money for a car, or has it been hard to save money it's for a car? It's been hard to save because I have three little ones. I have a four-year-old, a six-year-old, and a seven-year-old. They're constantly growing. It's 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 always something I got to get every week for them. You know what I mean? And you know, they get sick, and I take off work, so it kind of like it kind of um, it messes me up a little bit, you know, financially. But I would change it because I, I love my kids and. So you are about to see your new car. Uh, Susan, did you want to add anything well, before you unveil? The issue is credit. You know, even if you can save, you have to go normally, if you have poor credit, to a buy here, pay here, and you're paying in the 20s interest, and that's why you can't afford the car. It's not necessarily the monthly payment if there weren't any interest. Uh -huh. So the goal of this is to be able to get them into a car interest-free, building credit so that now when they're ready to get into their next car they can graduate into a program that we have that will allow them to build credit all right well susan would you now do the honors for us and uh, show us uh, show us okay <laughs> okay all right we'll need some volunteers to help pull the uh, cover off the car this is antonette's is this your first car this is antonette's first car here we go uh-huh. And remember the charity is Wheels of Success. There you go. Whoa. A Camry. <laughs> what do you think? It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm excited. How do, you, how do you think that's going to change well, life, your life? Well, I'll be able to take my kids places because they always want to do stuff with me and I never have the opportunity to take them anywhere lately. Um, be able to take them to the park, take them to the beach, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, gro yeah, grocery shopping. I usually go to the grocery store and have so many bags I can't buy everything, so I have to get on the bus and come back home and go back and forth. So it'd be a lot. It'd be help. Well, Antoinette, congratulations. <laughs> All right, thanks. I know you've waited a long time for this, and, and Susan, like thank you so much. Say if I have a minute, that this came about through a partnership that was unexpected. Antoinette was a guest at Trinity Cafe was talking to the volunteer sitting next to her, telling her she was gonna be getting a car from Wheels once they had one. And the lady said, I have a car. This is that woman's car. So right. you never well, know where- That's a great story. Yeah. Wheels of Success is a charity. Antoinette, congratulations. Thank Susan, thank you thank for the work you, so you do. You. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna go back and take a look at our leaderboard and look at the totals. Okay, that was great. Congratulations.
We're joined now by Zavi Gonzalez and Alicia Molinex. They're with the uh, Shriners Hospital of Tampa. And uh, Alicia and Zavi, thank you for coming by WEDU. Great to see you. Thank you so much for having us. So Alicia, tell us about the Shriners Hospital in Tampa. Okay, where to start? Shriners is the most amazing place. Uh, they were introduced to me and my family when Zavi was born. Um, Zavi was diagnosed with fibula hemimelia, which is the absent the absence of his fibula in his right leg. So um, at eight months old, Zavi went to Shriners, had a Symes amputation, 12 months old, received his first prosthesis, and was taken off ever since. And uh, the amazing thing about Shriners that they did for my family and every family is that regardless of the family's ability to pay, they, they take care of these children. Mm -hmm. And that's why this yes it seems like a really unusual condition too is that primarily uh -huh. who shrine the the shriners uh, helps out uh, medically i would say yes the tampa yeah. location uh, uh -huh. shriners has all different locations that spec like they do burn victims and you know orthopedics all sorts of st or orthotics and department um but with zavi's situation they help him they build the prosthetics there on location um but they also take care of so many children that have other disabilities as well. Zavi, um, what's it been like to be at Shriners Hospital in Tampa? Um, uh, it's been amazing because like they helped me play my favorite sport, baseball. You play baseball. Good yeah. for you. What's your position? What position do you play? Mostly second base and right field. And, um, and how many operations would you say you've had? Have you had a mm -hmm. lot? Maybe like two surgeries. Yeah. I'm about to get one more when I turn like 12. Uh, when you get older? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to play baseball? Uh, do you want to, you know, continue to play baseball? Yeah. Yeah. And and is how do, how does your uh, how does your leg feel? How does your prosthetic uh, device feel? Mm, I don't. I can't really say how it feels, but it feels so and so. It feels natural. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's. So it's, it's got to be amazing. I've heard so many stories about uh, parents and kids at Shriners Hospital and the amazing work that they do, not just here in the Tampa Bay Area, but all over the country. Yes, yeah. it, it's a true blessing, you know, to see my son walk, to see him run, uh -huh. to see him play baseball, and he's just as good as the next kid that has two pair of legs that are normal. I mean, it, it's, it's just as a mother, I mean, it touches you every time I see him. Do everything that a kid can do, yeah. Yeah, and it and is. for and for folks, for folks that can't afford these major surgeries too. Yes, it's going to be an incredible help to have the it, Shriners it takes Hospital. The, yes, it takes the burden off the the parents so they can focus on their children, get their children better, get their children walking, running, or, and doing everything another kid can do. Yeah, so. It's amazing. Do the Shriners uh, also help the parents? Do they give you a place to stay if oh, you're yes. coming from out of town? And They do. When yeah. Zavi had his surgery at eight months old, they put us in a room in Shriners. They feed you. I mean, they can't. They take care of you so well. Mm -hmm. I, they treat you like family. And they're our family now for forever. They're stuck with us. <laughs> <laughs> Zavi, thanks a lot for coming by. Do you have a favorite baseball team? Um, Chicago Cubs and Houston Astros. Do you know Joe Madden by any chance? No. But no. he met yeah. Joe Giardi. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, Zavi, thanks for coming by. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Way to go. Thank you. Alicia, thank you, too. Thank you. Well, while our next guests are being seated, let's go to our leaderboard and get an update on the total so far.
Well, for those of you waiting for Father Brown, uh, Father Brown will be shown in its entirety in uh, just a few minutes following this live broadcast. We're going to uh, join, uh, we're joined now by Allison Reed, who is with the uh, Tampa Oratorio uh, Singers. And Allison, welcome to Give Day Tampa Bay. Thank you. So give us a little bit of the background of the Tampa Oratorio Singers. Sure, sure. Our group, we're celebrating our 50th concert season this year. We specialize in classical choral music, mostly masterworks. Um, this season we'll be doing uh, Schubert Mass and also the Foray Requiem in the fall. Usually every season we do uh, two pre-performances of Handel's Messiah oh, that's great. for the community. So that's really how Give Day helps our group, is that it helps to make our concert season available, and we're really focused on making the arts accessible for everyone. How many singers in the uh, in the society? We've got about 60 to 70 people uh, in our group, and they're yeah. all volunteers from yeah. throughout the Tampa Bay area, um, just audition volunteers who enjoy music and enjoy bringing the arts to the community. And where do you perform? Uh, uh, we mostly perform at Palmasia Presbyterian. Uh -huh. That's our kind of our home base. They yep. donate space for our rehearsals, That's and then we also church. do off-site concerts uh, yeah. throughout the area. Uh -huh. And uh, so uh, can people join? Uh, sure, sure. We uh, go to our website, uh, www.tostampa.org, and you can find information there on auditions. We'll be auditioning in the fall. We're taking a bit of a break during the summer, but we'll be back for our, for our fall concert. And about how many concerts do you put on a year? Probably five per yeah. season. Uh -huh. yeah, we've got uh, two masterworks that sort of bookend the season and then some holiday concerts in the center. And tell us about how important these donations are that come oh, in. Oh, gosh. Donors are really our lifeblood. <laughs> they, um, donors make it possible for us to support our concert season, to take our arts to areas. We oftentimes we'll do outreach concerts in Plant City, Dade City. This season we had an opportunity to sing with the, with the children at Joshua House. Wow. So really the donors just help to make all this possible. And they bring uh, what we love to share with others, which is the joy of music with the whole community. And what's the website if people want to either you know find out where your concerts are sure. or to maybe join as a member of the choir. We'd love, we'd love <laughs> to have them. Um, our website is www.tostampa.org. All right. Well, Allison, thank you for coming by. Thank you so Give much. Good day, Tampa Bay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, while our next guests are being seated, let's go to our leaderboard and get an updated total on the donations so far. <laughs> Well, just a note to our viewers, the Father Brown is coming up in just a moment. We're just about to wrap up our live broadcast, so stay tuned to the Q channel here on WEDU. Well, we're going to talk with Wilma Norton one last time today on Give Day Tampa Bay. Wilma is with the Tampa Bay Community Foundation. And Wilma, how did we do today? We're doing great so far, Rob, but we've still got five hours to go, so we want people to keep giving. We have prizes yet to give away. Um, for some power hours and special prizes, but I think you've been here a good part of the day. There's been so much energy today and so many wonderful organizations. We've seen babies. We've had owls. We had a baby possum earlier. <laughs> we've had choirs. It's just... The range of charities is pretty enormous. We've had uh, groups that deal with sports, uh, groups that deal with youth and the elderly. We've had uh, uh, animal rescue groups. Uh, I, we've I, had arts groups. I love the honor tour that the veteran who was here right. earlier was here last year and talked about how meaningful that is. Being it, flown up to Washington, D.C. Yeah, yeah, it's just such a great way. That's, that's why this day is so much fun and so important to the community to raise the money but to show all of the work that goes on here day in day out year round 400 charities uh, raising money today on give day tampa bay yes, it's going to end at midnight tonight uh do you have a projection are we going to be ahead of what we did last year we sure hope so yeah. uh you know that's always our hope but i i have said all day that 
The money is important, but what we hope every nonprofit has taken away today, and every person watching has taken away, is that they've learned something about the nonprofits, that the nonprofits have learned how to tell their story, how to engage donors and engage volunteers and raise money. And that's really what this day is all about. And it's, it's been so exciting here today. And there, we've, we've still got some, time to go. There have been some incredible stories. I've met some incredible volunteers here today. You uh, you always do a, do a great job at this and, and always uh, leave here, I think, feeling like it's been worth it, and, yeah, and so do we. So yeah. we really thank our friends here at WEDU for doing this. Wilma Norton, thanks a lot. Thanks. Well, that wraps it up for Give Day Tampa Bay. Please log on to giveday.org anytime before midnight tonight and help us break a record and make your contribution to your favorite local nonprofit organization. You can choose from more than 400 organizations, and you'll be supporting those groups who keep the Tampa Bay area healthy and strong. Thanks for supporting Give Day Tampa Bay, and have a great night.